guess we're back. Yep, back to be back. It's been a while. <laughs> we'll go. Ahead, we'll go ahead and get started. It's, it's good to see you again. Good to see you too. <laughs> you didn't say that was very much. That was the most <laughs> unenthusiastic. Like my elementary school teachers would respond that way. Good to see you too. <laughs> All right, I'll say it with a nice uh, big, it's great to be back and it's a pleasure to see you again, Sir yeah. Jack. I'll dub that in. I'll, I'll make that happen. <laughs> I, like your new, I like your new setup. It's very nice. Thank you. I was going for the uh, more modern computer theme. Yeah, it's awesome. That's a Commodore. <laughs> instead of Commodore 64. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From 1980, what, uh, I think around 82, 83. Yeah, so no. these probably from like 84 or five models. I was alive, but <laughs> I, I didn't know any, like I couldn't, uh, I'm pretty sure I could see at that point. I, don't, I, don't, I know I didn't have any coherent thoughts about life at that point. <laughs> I was too young. I think I got into it around 86, 87. I was probably like 11, 12 years old at, at that time. Yeah. yeah. I had a, uh, my first computer was a TRS-80. Oh, you know what we used to call those? Trash 80. The tra right? There you go. <laughs> Trash 80. Well, luckily yeah. today, we're not going to, um, we're not going to talk about uh, Trash 80s or <laughs> programming in Logos or Basic or, or whatever we were doing back in the 80s. But uh, we're going to talk about Document AI, which I believe you're a big proponent of. You love it. I love it. I mean, it just makes, uh, you know, taking unstructured data in a document and adding structure and making it meaningful and useful and searchable. So yeah, I love it. I mean, it's, it's a time saver, lifesaver. Um, it's a great, a great, great piece of uh, product. Yeah. A lot of customer demand for it. Um, we'll, we'll go through it today. Um, I'll share my desktop. We'll, We'll just go through a super quick presentation. Everybody loves slides, I hear. So, oh um, yes, especially thought, me. I'm the biggest fan of slides. <laughs> Can't get I enough. Oh, why not? Well, you know, we can do slides. Why not do a slide? Um, so, th this is our most common slide, right? Which talks about um, <laughs> what we're trying to do, which is just take all the junk data. Um, and like documents, right? Like files, and then try to get something meaningful out of it, right? And so I don't know. I, I've been around the game, computing game now uh, in for enterprise or, or business accounts for 10 years. And like everybody knows, like all the data is in these emails and Excel spreadsheets and um, just all kinds of pictures and stuff. And, and they don't know how to get it out, right? So that's kind of the problem that Document AI tries to solve. Yeah, and, and one thing that you mentioned with all this data, um, a lot of this data is not searchable, it's not usable. I, there's like a low percentage, and I throw a number out there, like 20% is searchable or usable, or did people ever actually go back to it and take a look at it? And this kind of solves for that. I mean, this kind of helps take some document that somebody would just dump in a PDF somewhere and make it usable and searchable. Yeah. And the, you know, people would go out and buy expensive solutions. Um, I believe we at Google even had a, like a search appliance for documents a, a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago or more, but um, you know, they'd buy expensive solutions to try to get access to data, but they were just search appliances mostly. So this is a little diagram that I use sometimes just to try to show folks, okay, what are we actually talking about? Like, just take a picture of essentially anybody's um, driver's license and document AI, once you, once you feed it that picture, that image, can, can extract the data out of it so that it's usable now. And you could essentially pipe that all the way down through to the database. I, I think I actually have a slide on that, Jorge. You're going to be very excited. There it is. <laughs> so all the way from capture the content to, uh, you know, business intelligence solutions. I'm not, I'm not going to stay there. You, you'll kill me. 
if I stay there. <laughs> no one will, I'll get unsubscribed. Like, um, no tomorrow. Both yeah, subscribers. We'll both people we'll end up losing our two subscribers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> both people will unsubscribe. Yeah. Um, so, folks ask me all the time, like, can I do this myself? And I'm like, yeah, you kind of can. Like, Google is making this available to folks so that they don't have to um, build these tools themselves, like OCR capabilities and key value pair matching and forms, et cetera. Um, and we all sort of build it up into a thing called a specialized parser. But could you go to AutoML Vision and natural language processing and, and make this happen? Absolutely, you could. You can just go out and build those things. Um, and in some cases, a few cases, folks may consider that um, less expensive, but I don't really think so when you consider the time and effort that goes into it, right? So would you consider uh, Document AI more of a managed type solution for you? Oh, 100%. It's a polished PaaS service that is completely, like you don't have to do anything to use. In fact, um, I'll show you a, a little bit of um, how to use it. And, um, ah, it's demo time. I'll already do that. Demo. <laughs> so the cool thing is like you can, anybody can go, can go try it out. Um, you could do this in a couple ways, right? Like you can go to GCP, the GCP console, scroll down to, um, you know, and I, I may do this, I may add this to the video in like a little blur while I'm talking about it, but scroll down to document AI, um, go over, you'll see a bunch of parsers. You can choose a particular parser, like the form parser, or there are specialized parsers for special documents like, you know, W2 or 1099, something like that, depending on what you, what we've released at the time. And, um, I don't think it's any secret. We're going to build some really specific parsers, but you could go out and do that. You could go into GCP and, and try it. But if you're more of a, just want to see how it works, there's proof that it works. You can go to cloud.google.com slash document AI slash doc slash drag and drop. Um, I'll, I'll put that in the links below and um, you can just try it out. You can see how it works. So um, on enough talking, I'll go straight to the demo. Let's um, let's just do a general document and I'm just going to click here, scroll up a little bit so you guys can see this a little better. Click here and do drag and drop. So I have a bunch of um, stuff, right? Like I have this W2, so I'll just choose my W2. I do have to kind of tell it I'm not a robot, but submitting that to Document AI is now going to um, submit the document and then um, Document AI is gonna work its magic, you know, detecting segments, doing form value pairs, uh, you know, extraction. And, and so we should get this basically out of it, right? We get employee social security number. You can see where that came from. Scroll up a little bit here. Um, the OMB number, which I believe is a form number. I can't be 100% on that, but um, who the employer is. And, and so this is a super generic document, W2 from, from 2019. And it, you can see how it extracts all that stuff. Um, the demo does some other cool stuff like you can filter out like um let's see omb right you can find little data points in there it also collects the tables that are in a document um this one is not particularly easy to see because of how it's drawn out but you can see that this it's essentially considered this whole document partially tabled um the API, because that's how these things manifest themselves, like you submit the documents to an API call, um, it can do just OCR, um, which is pretty cool. It can just do key value pairs in a response. It can also do JSON, which from a data guy's perspective is sort of my favorite, right? Which, um, you know, tells you how many pages it has and then eventually gets down to uh, the coordinates of where it found things. And then lastly, if I keep scrolling, 
I'll get the key value pairs eventually. Um, I might have so to just find that for you. One of the, the, the nice parts of Document AI that it recognizes what kind of form this is and it knows specifically what to look for. It can, if it's a specialized parser, like I'm gonna reset this because we sort of looked at it now. If you notice, like we have specialized parsers like for invoices or for 1040s. Um, there, you know, if we go back to um, here, you'll see auto mail and natural language is sort of the first and OCR is like a, a simple service. The next level, which is actually a part of Document AI still is a form parser and it just parses out key value pairs. The last level in Document AI, which we typically will point towards a purpose, right? Like lending or procurement or identification. Those are specialized parsers and it'll do a classification on a submission. It'll say, oh, this is a W-2, this is a 1040. And it'll look for specific fields and have a specific schema response. Is that, I'm not sure if I'm just talking out my behind there or if I'm answering your question. Yeah, I know you answered it perfectly. I mean, you talked about how Document AI has particular parsers for certain document types. And then there's additional verticals that Google has, like you mentioned procurement, uh, there's a healthcare, there's lending that has more particular or more specified documents for those individual verticals. Yeah, I mean, I think we see a lot of opportunity here. Um, I get the question a lot of times, what happens when, you know, perhaps we don't guess the right thing, like we don't um, recognize a particular attribute in a document um, there's two things we can do. One is called a knowledge graph. Um, so Google knows a lot of stuff, right? Where um, we have essentially have information and, and have built machine learning models ourselves internally to understand exactly what a particular entity is. And we've turned that into a knowledge graph. And um, we're going to enable Document AI to use a knowledge graph to essentially validate the entities and attributes inside of an extraction. Um, and we're also going to have another capability, which I haven't documented here, but it's actually out there on the website, um, where a human can enter the loop when, say, a confidence score comes back on the document. I didn't, I didn't show confidence scores in our demo, but um, when a document comes back with a low confidence of proper extraction, a human can actually jump in there and make a correction. Excellent. All right. So what is another example, like here we have a picture of Einstein. Is there another example you can give of a use case for a knowledge graph, like maybe a receipt from a yeah. grocery store or something like that? Yeah, um, very common one, right? So a lot of times uh, employees will submit their receipts for reimbursement, right? And let's say the store name and the address do not match the real live entity and you have a knowledge graph on that, um, you could essentially do um, fraud protection to ensure that that receipt that's being submitted um, actually has the correct and, and true entities on it. So that's a really good example. And I, I don't know if Google will get into that business of being big brother, but <laughs> There's probably some, uh, there's some, probably some application for somebody out there. Right, so that could be used, for example, if you would say, um, like in fraud protection, it could check an address to see if it's a, a viable address or mm -hmm. um, if it's still there. Or there's multiple use cases for uh, this type of uh, uh, knowledge graph role or for fraud protection, as you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's really a lot. I mean, ultimately, what you would like to do is take that unstructured document and make it business intelligence, right? Like make it something that's either in a data warehouse or in, even in an OLTP system, some database that you can use for verification of a particular um, set of information or in, you know, directional 
um, or, or what we're, we're called descriptive analytics, right? Um, we even see in the mortgage section or um, financial markets, like they're using, they, they hope to get predictive, um, get the unstructured data, say from a loan uh, origination, and then um, predict, uh, you know, future performance of that loan over, you know, with other data enrichments, I think you understand. Yep. So this is kind of uh, the flow of the data. Um, yeah. I'm going to so stop end, sharing so nobody throws up over my slides. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end, you want to basically get it into your data warehouse. And uh, yeah. from your data warehouse, you want to do, you can do, you know, basic uh, search queries. And then if you want to create some kind of custom dashboard, that's where we introduce something like Looker. Yeah. Um, you know, we work at Google. Every <laughs> All roads lead to BigQuery, right? <laughs> Yeah. I think you have to sign a waiver that when you die, you go to BigQuery. But, um, you know, th that's a good endpoint for analysis and, and the smart analytics on that data. All right. Excellent. I have amazed you, Jorge. Thank you for yes. listening to me. Bewildered. Uh, <laughs> it's always very exciting. Um, I hope somebody finds this interesting. Um, I'll pop a... Uh, a demo of how to get through it in um, in the GCP console uh, on this video as well. And um, I look forward to talking to you uh, coming up. All right. Excellent. Look forward to doing this again.